this, Sunday the Passion, Palm Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. I want to warmly welcome everybody here. Thank you for joining us as we uh, celebrate this special occasion. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. Glory to you, O Lord, as we read this on Sunday as we profess in, process in the church. Jesus enters Jerusalem. When he had come near Jerusalem and reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying, Go to the village ahead of you, and immediately you'll find a doc, uh, donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them. And you'll send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and other cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and the followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When he entered Jerusalem, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet, Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Then we bless the, the palms. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let's pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through your Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph to proclaim Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us peace to his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way to the cross, that so that joined in his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we profess as we go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. God's work, our hands working together, building a future, repairing the world, raising up homes, planting new gardens. Feeding the hungry and sheltering the cold. Bless God our hands as we work in your name, sharing the good news of your gospel. God's work, our feet, traveling together, following Jesus to places unknown. Walking as friends, marching for freedom, running a race with God's future, the goal. Bless God our feet as we follow your way, sharing the good news of your gospel. God's work, our voice, singing together, Proclaiming to all who will hear Praying for peace Shouting for justice Claiming God's love for the lost and the least Bless God our voice as we speak in your name Sharing the good news of your gospel God is at work Seedlings are sprouting and wet 
sins on the rise, washed and set free, humbled and honored, gifted by grace we respond in God's love. Bless God our lives as we answer your call, sharing the good news of your gospel. Today we encounter the paradox that defines our faith. Jesus Christ is glorified King and humiliated servant. We too are full of paradox. Like Peter, we fervently desire to follow Christ but find ourselves afraid, denying God. We wave palms in celebration today as Christ comes into our midst. We follow with trepidation as path follows to death on the cross. Amid it all, we are invited into his paradoxical promise of life through Christ's broken body and outpoured love and a meal of bread and wine. We begin this week that stands at the center of the church year, anticipating the completion of God's outstanding work. In the name of the God who is in all way Miller's walks in us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess we wandered far from you, have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance in grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow your ways. Assure us again of your love. And hope, help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us. And for his sake forgives us all our sins. As the call and ordainment of the church of Christ. And by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and suffer death in the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will, the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we listen as God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, and song. Let's share Psalm 31 responsively. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life, life is wasted, wasted with grief, and my, my hair is with sorrow. My strength fails me because of my affliction, and my, my bones, bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, dead I am forgotten out of mind. mind. I am as useless as a broken, broken pot. pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I, I have trusted, trusted in you, O Lord. Lord. I, I have said, said you, you are, are my God. God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face they shine upon your service. Service. Save, Save me in your steadfast, steadfast love. love. The second reading is from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Paul uses an early Christian hymn to help us comprehend Jesus' obedient selflessness on the cross and how God has made Christ Lord over all reality. The perspective of the cross becomes the way we rightly understand God, Christ, our own lives, and fellowship within the community of Christ. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself 
and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Now we read the Passion of Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And I will read this, and this will take the place of the sermon also because of the length. But I'm going to, uh, this is what we'll do on Sunday. I'm going to read all the parts. The narrator says, The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When Jesus had failed saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know there are two days the Passover has come and the Son of Man will be handed over to the crucified. The narrator says, The chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the festival or there will be riot among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. When the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? She's performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you'll not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she's prepared me for burial. Truly I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I burn? Pay him to you. They paid him 20 pieces of silver. From that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city of a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did it. Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, it's written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for the one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing, he broke it, gave disciples, and said, Take it, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you and my finger, Father's kingdom. <coughs> when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the shepherd of the flock will be scattered. The sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I'll go ahead of you in Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters become of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. 
Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went then with, went with a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which be James and John, and began to be grieved and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them asleep, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away to the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See the hours at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him, a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them signs, saying, The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And Judas kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. You think that I cannot appeal to my father? He will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so the scriptures of prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest and going inside. He sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so they might ask to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is that you testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you on a rope before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man, see the rain and the hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his clothes and said, He's blaspheming. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who was that that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard. A certain girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. <clears throat> 
When he went out of the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you're the one with them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. That moment the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will betray, deny me three times. Then he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring him about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver, the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. What they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the piece of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest taking a piece of silver said, it is not lawful to put him in the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they decided to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was, was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the pieces of silver, the price of one on whom the price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the poor potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, not even a single charge. The governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was a customer, at least a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to him, Who do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? We realized it was out of jealousy they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For they have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. And I said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, what he, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw he could not do nothing, but rather the riot was beginning, he took some water, washed his hands before the crowds, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people of the whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldier, the governor, took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. After twisting some thorns into a crowd, and they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and knocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe, put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Bogotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. And when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they defied his clothes among themselves, 
by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put a charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. And two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by the right are shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lene, Sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine from the stick, and gave it to drink. The other said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of their saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to the disciples and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean and in cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, remember what the pastor said he was still alive. After three days, I'll rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, the disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception be worse than the first. Pilate said to him, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and in my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Oh, I am small, my God, my own. Mercy will last from the depths of the past. 
us to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to fight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is a promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Let's share our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Save your church, O God, enable us to boldly confess in every <coughs> time and place that Jesus Christ is Lord. With the humility of a servant, equip congregations, synods, and other ministry settings to proclaim your extravagant love for all. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Save your creation, O God. Every living being you have made has purpose. Give us renewed application of uh, renewed appreciation of farm animals who labor in the fields, service animals who accompany their human companions, and beloved pets who live uh, alongside us. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Save the peoples of the earth, O God. Restore dignity to those who are scorned and persecution for their religious beliefs or political activism, and deliver them from the hand of their enemies. Bring peace to places where conflict runs deep. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Save those who cry to you in any need, O oh God. Watch over all who are incarcerated or awaiting trial, and stand with those who are unjustly accused. Be present 
with those fleeing isolation, loneliness, or fear. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us in your love, O oh God. Guide the work of the church, Musici musicians, pastors, choirs, readers, deacons, technicians, acolytes, and all who assist in worship. Sustain them in their leadership as they accompany congregations through this holy week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Send angels of protection to care and compassion to those who serve in our armed forces and protect and sacrifice us so that we can be free. We pray especially for Beth and Ryan, Owen, Jonathan, Jacob, Noah, Irene, and Alex. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Healing God, raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships, occupation, living situation, or health condition, especially Aaron, Ann, and Bob, Bev, Dan, David, Jim, John, John, Jordan, Lawton, Lyra, and family, Kara and Tim, Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We especially lift up to you, presiding Bishop Elizabeth, our sin and Bishop Craig, and Pastor Carl. We ask that you be with their res respective staffs as they live out their callings to serve. As we are called to be one, even as Jesus and the Father are one, be with the leaders and the congregation of Messiah Lutheran Church in Bay City and other churches in our community. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save us at the last, O oh God. We give you thanks for your saints of old who embodied your servants' love. As you came to their aid, so deliver us in times of trial that every knee would bend in praise to you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting your steadfast love and your promise to renew our hope for creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Pure God's peace. Peace be with you always. Peace be with you. Now, Lord, remember us so your kingdom teaches to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will, will be done, done on earth, earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, are yours now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. God, the giver of life, Christ, the resurrection of life, Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen.
Thanks be to God.